Hello, hello, hello. Today we're going to be talking about Half-Life 1. Um, specifically Half-Life 1 Gold Source. I do realize that this is not Half-Life 1 Gold Source. I do own that game and I have played all the way through it. I have a stream of it, but the quality is really bad and I was talking throughout the stream so I'm going to have to mute my audio whenever I put it in the video. Basically, I'm going to have to use Half-Life Source uh, footage for this just to keep good quality and good sound. Um, so I apologize for that. I'm going to put a little bit of a logo in the top right corner of the screen of which game I'm playing. Um, here's the Half-Life uh, Source logo, and here's the Half-Life Gold Source logo that I'm going to be using for this. Alright, let's get on with the video. Half-Life 1, a true modern classic. First released in 1998, my goal for today is to make you consider playing this 24-year-old game today. The first thing, and the most important thing when jumping into Half-Life 1 especially, is to understand how storytelling works in this game. It is very different from a lot of other games. In my opinion, Half-Life 1 did this entire style the best. In Half-Life 1, you play Gordon Freeman, who works at a secret science laboratory called Black Mesa. During the course of the game, one of your experiments goes wrong, and you start what's called a Resonance Cascade, which lets people from other worlds or universes or whatever come to your planet and invade. And you'll have to play the game to find out what happens after that. So that's just a quick overview of the story, but that's not really what's most interesting about this game. What's even more interesting and adds more to the gameplay, I would say, which is the most important thing of a video game, is that Half-Life 1 tells this amazing and beautiful story without putting you through fucking monologues like every other game that I've ever played. It's fine if I'm playing certain games to play a whole ass monologue in the middle of gameplay, but it's not fun. You know, you gotta throw down your weapons and stop having fun, or, you know, whatever game you're playing, you gotta stop having fun just to listen to what this cutscene has to say to, like, let you know what the hell's going on in the story. And that's incredibly infuriating as, um, as somebody who likes, you know, non-stop action in their video games, and I'm sure a lot of other people would really like, you know, to them to just shut the hell up and let you play the game and get the story from the gameplay. And the entire story of Half-Life 1 is told through the gameplay. The specific terms um, and all that stuff that you learn can be learned by listening to the characters talking. And the only real monologues or forced cutscenes are all at the beginning of the game where they're kind of setting up the story. Um, and this is opposed to like Skyrim or uh, Half-Life 2 even, where y you'll get to the end of a mission in Half-Life 2, or, or you'll just, you know, go somewhere, and then Eli and Alex will talk to each other for 40 goddamn minutes, and you just gotta sit there and listen to them talk, or in Skyrim, you gotta go up to somebody and talk to whoever, and then they'll go and, like, give you a quest, and then you'll talk to them more, and that's what furthers the story, rather than in this game, where you shoot people, and that's it. The rest of the way they tell the story is all just environmental. Now you might ask, how do they tell the story without having to, you know, write things down or put things all over the place or have people talk to you? It's, it's all around you, per se. At the beginning, everybody around you is just, you know, dying and y your instinct is to get the fuck out of here. And, you know, you, they don't, you don't have to be told to get the fuck out of there. You don't have to have some sort of story reason why you need to get the fuck out of there. You just see these things happening around you. Everybody's dying. Um, you get into a room with a guy, and he goes on a monologue, but then he just dies in the middle of it. It's, it's pretty, well, I wouldn't say funny, but it's, it's pretty, like, fuck you to all those games that do that. You know, it's like a, it's emblematic of what this whole game was going for. It's just, like hey, we're going to joke that there's about to be a monologue, and then we're going to just kill the character right through the middle of it, you know? Or right even before he starts. And then you flip a switch, turn off the electricity, and then you walk through um, a bunch of, you know, ventilation and stuff. And th the whole game is, like, just in your face, you know? The whole story is just happening around you rather than, like, them having to explicitly tell you what's going on or 
um, how things interact with each other. You don't have to sit there and you know read books like you do have to in Skyrim to understand um, the whole story of the Elder Scrolls universe. And to be honest, the Elder Scrolls is one of my favorite games. I love that style of game, but it's really intrusive to the gameplay, which is also a fun part of the game. It feels like I'm going between learning about Elder Scrolls and playing a fun game. I like both of those things, but I, if you can combine them together, that would be so much better. And the Half-Life 1, like Half-Life 1 as like a whole game, it does that perfectly. It, it The gameplay and the whole experience is just one rather than having Oh, learning about Half-Life lore and then, you know, actually doing the missions and stuff like that. And it feels like even Half-Life 2 kind of failed, where it was like, your gameplay isn't really mixed too much with the story. Now we're going to talk about something that's kind of in the middle ground of gameplay and story. Um, and this is kind of just what the, what you do in the game, you know? you The whole point of the game is that you got to fight through these two massive factions. The Zen, which are the people who come from the other worlds or universes or whatever. Um, and you have to fight the military, which is also fighting the Zen. Now the thing is, is the Zen, both the Zen and the military, are insanely, like, massively powerful and they could probably crush you in an instant if you had uh, just crossed their path. But the whole point of the faction war going on is that it kind of adds sense to what's happening right now. You know, you're not like a lone man taking on two massive beasts. No, you're, you're a guy who is just slipping in between the cracks of these two massive armies facing off. You see helicopters and massive zen, you know, flyers crashing into each other, blowing each other up in the background, like you have these big monsters and these big tanks all attacking each other. And then you're just sneaking through. You know, you notice that throughout the game that you're not the main character, you know, you're not the important thing. You're just some guy who found some guns and is trying to get the hell out of here before anything happens to you. But enough about the story, let's talk about the gameplay, what's the good and what's the bad. So let's start with the bad. There isn't really that much bad about the game, but let me just tell you a few of the things you're going to just have to deal with going through it. There are a lot of annoying zen uh, creatures, like ones that have armor, so you have to be very accurate with weapons that aren't very accurate. You have to be um, very, you know, pinpoint precision with a gun that, you know, sprays all over the fucking place. Um, and I think that that's not the best design. There are a lot of, you know, different creatures, especially on Zen, that have very small hitboxes, and they're incredibly difficult to kill. There's these little cockroach guys that run around very fast, do 10 damage a hit, and hit really fast, meaning they hit like a truck. They're incredibly small and incredibly fast. There are some glitches in the game, you're going to have to deal with that, some missing textures, you can see right through the map in certain areas, um, and a lot of different problems with the game. I'll be showing Half-Life Gold Source glitches. Half-Life Source glitches are a whole different beast that I will tackle when I make the Half-Life Source video. But for now we're going to be talking about Half-Life Gold Source glitches, and there, there are quite a few. A lot of textures like to overlap with each other for whatever reason. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do, but a lot of the glitches are it's things that you can do yourself rather than like game breaking or like they happen to you. And speaking of game breaking, I don't know of any glitches that will just crash your game. There are a few like stuck spots, like for instance, I got past. Um, so when you move to Zen for the first time, when you get to Zen for the first time, you, you need to get this long jump uh, module. And I, you, you don't have to get the mo long jump module to move on. You can just get, just move on without the long jump module. Meaning that you either have to cheat or restart the entire game. Um, because, you know, saves only happen in threes and there are three different auto saves between module and the first time you have to long jump. And finally, uh, this is more of a personal gripe and might be affected by the difficulty I played on, but marines and all of the soldiers just seem to have too much health. Um, 
a one right click shotgun shot doesn't always kill them and it's a little bit infuriating to me when that happens but that's again just like me not liking uh how they did health and everything like that in the marine specifically there uh, all the other mobs seem to be balanced pretty well where like the bigger they are the bigger their hitboxes are the more damage they take which makes sense to me as a video game player but um the very small hitbox of the marines makes it really annoying to fight them and it also makes it more annoying to fight them when one grenade placed like a couple feet away from them still won't kill them so there's a lot to be annoyed with with them with the marines but that's just gonna be something you have to deal with they're not the most common enemy in the game though so don't worry about it so finally we have the good parts of the gameplay and let me tell you there's a lot of good to this gameplay now sadly it's almost impossible almost comically impossible to explain to you why something has great mechanics and something has great gameplay it's it's so difficult to like try to show you uh through clips or whatever how the movement is so much better than half-life source than even half-life 2 i feel like the movement is just so tight on you know non-ice parts ice parts are a thing in this game just you know that sucks but you have to deal with it but on regular ground, the movement is just so good. I don't know how to explain it to you guys. But I'll hopefully be playing some footage in the background of Half-Life Gold Source. And you'll be able to see how just tight and amazing the movement is. And it, it feels relatively fast-paced, which is good. But it's also slow enough to where you can get your bearings. And uh, this is a gripe with Half-Life Source, but Half-Life Source has really really fast movement which makes it almost impossible to control when you want to do small jumps which is you know a pretty big part of the game is doing some platforming um especially in the beginning where you're not going to want to be playing source at all but um when platforming is the thing half-life gold source just probably has one of the best movement um you know in any game right just the best wsd space bar crouch and that's it you know um i would say i'm most used to the counter-strike global offensive movement so if you like that movement you'll probably like the half-life gold source movement because it is very similar and it is very very good the gunplay the guns feel powerful as long as you're fighting you know not marines the guns feel really just awesome you know the sound design is just amazing i'll try to play an audio clip if i can uh, get one without my voice over it but the shotgun just sounds like a shotgun it sounds amazing the audio quality is a little low but it balances out with just how good the sound design is that is the one advantage of half-life source is that the sound quality is so much higher but other than that it's just an amazing amazing you know experience to just blast people with shotguns or shoot them with the i know i'm using the hd models but i like the way the m16 looks sue me but the m16 just spraying that sounds like it's just amazing like i don't even know how to explain um how good the sound design is it's it's just it just feels amazing when you play the game. There are many more great things about this gameplay, um, but I'm going to end the video here as it's getting a little long. So thank you guys for watching. I'll hopefully make a Half-Life Source video soon. I will also try to make a Half-Life Blue Shift video and a Half-Life Opposing Force video. Maybe even do a Black Mesa video. I haven't committed on doing that one yet, but that is possible and I will very very likely do Half-Life 2 and all of the side games with that but that might may or may not be a very long time from now compared to the Blue for, uh, blue Shift and Opposing Forces. Those games are relatively short and I'm used to the control set and I'm you know actually in a Half-Life 1 kick right now as it is my favorite Half-Life game. Um, but you know 
hopefully I'll get some of those games out to you guys real soon. I'm also planning um, an Oblivion video in the future when I do finish that game. And I'm committed to do Morrowind, even though I gave up for a while on doing Morrowind. I am committing to doing that right now. Um, I also stream on YouTube and sometimes on Twitch, but I'm not going to share my Twitch streaming information right now as it's only it only has one stream ever on it and nobody watched it. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll post streams on YouTube if you ever want to look through the previous streams. It's in an unlisted... They're all unlisted, but you can find them in a playlist that is uh, perfectly listed on my channel. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, catch my streams whenever I do them. See you guys.